This video will teach you about the inspection process when buying a home. Remember to tell your realtor that you want Robson and Lopez as your attorneys when buying or selling your home. You pay for the attorney, so you get to choose them. In this video, you will learn what it means if your contract is as is, what to look for when reviewing your inspection report, what repairs are you allowed to request, what repairs you are not allowed to request. If you're watching this video, you just had a contract accepted to buy a property or a home, congratulations. You now had your inspection done and you're looking at the inspection report and you're not sure what to do with it. Well, bear in mind that the first thing to bear in mind is that all inspection reports always find problems with houses. You're paying a qualified licensed professional home inspector to go and find everything wrong that they can with the property and they generally do that. Um, it's very uh, common for people to think, oh, this house is in a lot worse shape. Maybe I shouldn't buy it and go find a house that has a clean inspection report. There's no such thing as a clean inspection report. All houses have problems and inspectors are always going to find problems with all of those houses. What you want to be on the lookout for, however, are big ticket items. Things that are going to be very costly or expensive to fix that are cost costly enough or expensive enough um, time-wise or money-wise to make you wa walk away from the property. Um, the roof is caving in. The foundation is shot. Um, a, a basement or crawl space that has a ton of water coming in uh, every time that it rains. Those are the type of items that you want to look for and ask yourself, do I really like this house enough to deal with this uh, time-consuming, expensive problem after I purchase it? And you're the one that's in the best position possible to make that decision. If that answer is no, then we still have the right to cancel the contract and have your earnest money deposit returned. You ask yourself, well, who refunds my, my money for the inspector? The answer is no one. You pay for the due diligence, and it's much better to pay that three to $500 ahead of time than, than to buy the house side in with a report, without a report, and then find out that you have to spend ten dollars or $15,000 that you weren't counting on. So once you get past that, if there aren't any big ticket items or items that concern you, then you ask yourself, what am I looking for? Well, if your contract was as is, meaning that the seller's telling you, I will sell you this property, I will allow you to do an inspection to make sure that you're satisfied with the condition of the property, but I will not make any repairs or give you any additional credits, then at that point, the only thing that you can do if you don't like the inspection report is cancel the contract to ensure that you get your earnest money back. If the contract was not as is, then the inspection contingency does allow you to try to negotiate repairs or uh, additional credits. The key term there being negotiate. The seller is not required to do absolutely anything or to give you any additional credits. They can just simply say no. So you have to ask yourself, um, how much do you like this property and what is it that is concerning you enough to, to make you not want to move forward, but maybe if they are willing to do it, that you will move forward. So uh, the inspection contingency also places some restrictions on what you can and cannot ask for. You, can at, you cannot ask for cosmetic items. Um, you cannot ask for improvements or upgrades to the property. You cannot ask for uh, general uh, maintenance or minor items, uh, routine maintenance to the property. Um, you are allowed to ask for um, items that are a concern to safety or security of the property or the persons, um, anything dangerous, uh, electrical shorts, things like that that could cause a fire. You are also allowed to ask for repairs of major components or items of the house, things like um, the structure, the windows, the doors, heating, electrical, plumbing, um, AC, uh, things that are considered to be uh, um, a major component of the house that aren't in its working condition. There's one additional restriction that I also point out that you are not allowed to ask for something to be replaced just because it is old. The contract specifically says just because something is old does not mean that it is not working. If it is working and it is 20 years old, the inspector is probably going to tell you that it's past its life expectancy. That's the term that they like to give you because they want to warn you that you may have to replace it in a year or two. Unfortunately, if it's not broken now, it's not a repair, so you are not allowed to ask for it. However, if something is brand new and it's not working, it goes the other way too. If it's brand new and it's not working, then you are allowed to ask for it to be repaired because it's not serving its intended purpose. Additionally, remember that you can try to negotiate credit from the seller instead of repairs. A few things to keep in mind though. Credit from the seller isn't actual money that you will receive. 
the seller won't give you cash or check at closing for the credits. Instead, any credit amount is discounted from what you would have to pay for your, towards your closing cost or down payment. For example, if you originally had to bring $6,000 and the seller agreed to give you $500 in credit instead of repairs, you now will only have to bring $5,500. Additionally, credit isn't, a credit isn't tied exactly to what a repair would cost, so you generally don't go out and get an estimate for what it would cost to repair a furnace. Um, or even if you did, and let's say that estimate came back at $1,000, that credit usually isn't $1,000. Instead, it's whatever amount would make you feel comfortable moving forward with the closing and dealing with the repairs yourself after the closing. And that would also make the seller feel comfortable that instead of having to deal with the headache of having to have repairs made, they'll just give you the credit at closing and then be done with it. Also, it's important to remember that your bank can limit the amount of money that you can receive as a credit from the seller. For example, if you're using an FHA loan, the maximum amount of credit you can receive typically is 6% of the purchase price or what you're paying for the house. If you're using a conventional loan, the maximum amount of credit you can receive is 3% of the purchase price. There are other restrictions and limitations on the type of credit or the amount of credit that you can receive depending on the, the bank and the type of loan that you're getting. So always remember to check with your loan officer before agreeing to any additional credit instead of repairs. So another important thing to bear in mind when deciding what, if anything, you're gonna ask for is that the, the seller does have the right to cancel the contract. They can just say, no, you know what, never mind, we don't like your counter offer, um, the contract is canceled, here's your earnest money back. That, it, it, it does happen. Um, not often, but it does happen. Generally, if, if the seller gets offended, they've been in the home for 20, 30 years, and they say, how dare you insult my home like that? If you don't like it, never mind, just go find another buyer. Or the more common thing that happens is that after they've accepted your offer, they get a better offer, and they tell that potential buyer, hold off for a few days to see what this current buyer asks for. If they ask for anything that's unreasonable or that we think is unreasonable, we'll just cancel the contract and move forward. Um, and they are allowed to do that because your request for repairs is technically considered a counter offer. So if you really want the home and you wanna make sure that you don't lose it, the only guaranteed way to do that is to tell the seller that you're not requesting anything and you decide to move forward. And you're in the per you are the person that's in the best position to make that decision. So bear in mind that this is general advice um, not specific to you or the property that you are buying. You should speak to an attorney and because you're paying the attorney who's representing you in the process, you get to choose who they are. So tell your real estate agent or broker that you want the attorneys of Robson and Lopez LLC representing you in the purchase of your home and give us a call today to get the process started.